Hello, everybody. My name is Printed Boxdale, and I hope that you have you enjoying this YouTube channel. Will you please hit the subscribe and like button? And y'all are going to have a hallelujah good time, for we got many more to come. And let's have a good time together. Hello, my brothers and sisters. I want to give you a special invitation. We would like to invite you out to the Church of Christ at Eastside, 4040 Meridale Drive, Nashville, Tennessee, 37207. We have 930 Sunday School. 1030 worship. We would love for you to come to be with us. A place where there's good singing, a place where there's a lot of fellowship, a lot of love, and certainly if you come, you would be part of that. So don't be late. Come soon. Don't put it off today. Thank you. Yeah. 
good morning. Yeah. Here to ready uh, to praise and serve God in this worship service. Our scripture reading for this morning, if you'd like to read along with us, we come from the book of 2 Corinthians, chapter 4, verse 7 through 10. Again, that is 2 Corinthians 4, 7 through 10. And it reads as follows. But we have this treasure yes, in earthen vessels, yes, that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. All right. We are troubled on every side, yes, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, yes, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Yes, Cast down, but not destroyed. Always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our bodies. May the Lord add a blessing to the hearers, doers, and most definitely those who share his holy divine. Right. Now we prepare our minds to go to God in prayer. When you are all alone and can not find someone to talk
and different articles and what have you. So anyway, long story short, I'm in town. Uh, to, I went down there yesterday to, to preach, and I was there with Brother Robert Holt and Brother uh, Hall out at uh, Buena Vista. And that was my first time hearing you that man could preach. And uh, it was a good, good message yesterday. And then uh, Brother David Meeks was there also. Uh, we were the speakers for the day, and then they had great singing that afternoon. And so I uh, couldn't get a flight out of here last night. I knew I was going to have to be here today. And I started to be slick and just slip in on Brother Hughes after he got up preaching. Just be sitting in the back and let him look up and see me there. But I, uh, I was here not long ago, uh, back in the spring of the year. I had to keynote at Preet Hardeman. And I came to Nashville, couldn't get out, so I, had to, I came to Nashville that Sunday, and I went to Scott that morning, and I came to you guys that afternoon, so I flipped it this time, because he got on me last time, and so yeah, now I'm at Eastside. And Eastside is one of my favorite places. We've had some great times together in this building and the other building, amen. And I remember when I was here, and it flooded not too long ago, and, and Brother Fred was here, and I, I thought they were going to cancel it. He got up and started singing. We had church and you know, all. And so uh, just good to be here. It's hard to walk in here without thinking about Jack Wood. Uh, first of all, he had a great name, Jack. That's a great name. And secondly, he was my friend. And, and I appreciate him and his wife and the ministry they have uh, conducted down through the years. So we, we want to keep his memory alive. But it's good to be here. And thankful to God. Amen. Thankful to God because you only hear about the grace of God. I don't care how well you think you look this morning, how great you feel, you are here by the grace. And we need God. Amen. Somebody say amen. We need God. You can't make it. I know the clock went off this morning, but it was God that woke you up. Amen. Everybody needs, even the atheist needs God. A story told about a man walking through the woods and he's an atheist. He didn't believe in God and uh, he's just walking, and, and the bear got out after him and chased him all the way up to the top of this tree. This man just climbing up and climbing up, and the bear's at the bottom of the ground, and he's getting ready to go up and get him, and the man starts praying. Never remember, he's an atheist, he, but he starts praying. He says, Lord, listen, God, I believe in you now. I believe in you. I believe you exist. I, I, I need you right now. Lord, please help me, Lord. I need you to do me a favor. Lord said, what do you want me to do? He said, Lord, please, please, please make this bear down here a Christian bear. <laughs> and so the man noticed the bear stop growling, and he looked down the tree, and the bear backed up off the tree. And he crossed his paws like this, and he said, Heavenly Father, I want to thank you for this meal I'm about to receive. May it be nourishing for my body. <laughs> so even the atheist needs God. Is that all right? Now, y'all know I can be long-winded, but I'm not going to do that today. What do you say? <laughs> Your church didn't say that. The preacher said it in the church. Look at that, it's funny. Why is it every church has a clock? Nobody can see it but the preacher. <laughs> yeah. All right, this is what I want to do this morning. I want to share something with you that would be of um, intrinsic value. I, I thought about preaching this morning. I, I'm going to preach at 1.30 at... Um, at Scott today, so they won't be mad at me. And I was going to, I am going to do for them the strategy of the spirit. Uh, but uh, and I thought about doing that this morning. But this morning I got something else on my heart that uh, I think would be of great value uh, to this church. Uh, uh, I, I've been traveling a lot this year, and I, I do it every year. But I've been really rolling this year. The last twelve weeks I've been on the road almost every, every weekend. Uh, New York, Long Island, New York, Los Angeles, California, Indianapolis, uh, Houston twice, uh, San Antonio, did two week campaign in Trinidad and Tobago. And I'm not bragging, I'm just talking about how good God has been to me. I did all this without incident. Uh, didn't ex wasn't exposed to Ebola anywhere. Uh, just, just thankful to be here safely. Uh, but uh, I was in Jamaica last year. Uh, at the Mona Boulevard Church of Christ, and and I did a meeting for them. It was a, it was an island-wide campaign for the Mona Boulevard Church, and I, I fell in love with the uh, the accent of the people. Uh, 
you know, I love the way they talk over there. And, and, and whenever you ask them something, they have a certain attitude about them. Yes, they'll, they'll say to you, no problem, ma. <laughs> I mean, it got so good to me, Brother Fred. I started talking just like that. They said, Brother Evans, you did. I said, no, 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 no problem, man. No problem. Yeah, man, yeah, man. I mean, I, I had it down pat. And uh, I was on the street one day. I was walking on the street, and the guy kept looking at me. And, you know, when you're in a foreign place, you you got to be observant of what's going on around you. And so I kind of I looked at the man. I said, what's the matter? And the man looked at me and said, hey, man, are you a Jamaican? with my southern twang. I said, no, I'm from Texas. <laughs> he said, well, you look like a Jamaican. <laughs> he said, you can't even walk like a Jamaican. He said, but I knew you were not Jamaican when you opened your mouth. <laughs> but I, I love that attitude. No problem. So I got back home, Brother Hughes, and I wanted to preach a sermon called No Problem. All right, all right. So, you know, preachers, we got to find a text. I got to have a text. And so I picked up my King James Version of the Bible, and I began to look in the Old Testament. I started with the Pentateuch. I started with the books of Moses, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. Could not find the word problem. So I kept looking. Joshua, Judges, Ruth, 1st, 2nd Samuel, 1st, 2nd King, 1st, 2nd Chronicles, Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther, Job, Psalm, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Songs of Solomon. Just kept on looking. Could not find a writer that used the word problem. So I checked the major prophets, Daniel and Ezekiel and Isaiah and Jeremiah, and even the minor prophets, you know, Obadiah and Jonah and those hard books to find, Hosea, you know what I'm talking about. And nobody used it. I said, well, you know what, maybe in the New Testament there's somebody there. And so I went on and I looked in the synoptics, uh, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and they didn't use it. I looked in the uh, my favorite book, John. John had used it. I, I looked in the Acts of the Apostles. I looked in Romans. I, I checked the prison epistles, the pastoral epistles. I said, somebody surely has used this word problem in the, in, in, in the Bible, and none of them had used it. And then I checked those little books that are hard to find, you know, like uh, Jude and, and Philemon. I know some of y'all call it Philemon. It ain't Philemon. It's Philemon. <laughs> Uh, and, and, and you know the books you have to look in the concordance to find. Y'all know what I'm talking about. And I said, well, maybe John used it in Revelation. Went on to Revelation, checked all through. Nobody in the entire Bible, in the King James Version, used the word problem. And so I just came to the conclusion with God on my side. No problem, mom. Ooh, y'all going to make it tough on me. In this. I'm trying to help somebody because somebody in here brought some stuff. Right. And the preacher was talking about it earlier. You, you know you're alive as long as you got trouble and issues and problems and situations and drama. You know what I'm talking about. But God has fixed it so that with him on our side, the problems are no problem for him. Amen. So I needed a text. I needed a text. And so I went to uh, 2 Corinthians 4, verse 7. You heard him read it this morning. Uh, Paul said, we have this treasure. In earthen vessels, that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. Paul said, we are troubled on every side, yet not distressed, perplexed, but not in despair, persecuted, but not forsaken, cast down, but not destroyed, always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus Christ. So I said, you know what, that's a perfect text for no problem. Because I, 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 I looked at Paul, and let me back up just for a moment. Y'all know I go to Israel quite a bit, and I've been uh, seven times uh, over there, and then been to Israel and Egypt twice uh, without incident, and uh, we're planning to go again in 2016. Right now, they, they need to do a little talking and get themselves together. Uh, it's a little hot right now, so we, we're not going this year, uh, next year, but we're in 16 after they come to some agreements. And we're going to go back over if you want to go with us. But next year, I'm taking a trip to Greece, and we've got about 30 people already signed up to go. And uh, it's an 11-day trip, eight days on land and three days on the sea. The Aegean Sea in May, it's real calm. 
We're going to go to some of the islands that Paul went to on his missionary journeys. And uh, I'm excited about it because I, I, I'm, I'm in awe of Paul. He's, he's one of the greatest Bible characters. And he endured some things. And yet he held on firmly to God's unchanging hand. So I want to invite you to go with us. And, and after service, I'll go out to the car. I've got some flyers on the trip. Those who would like to take a look at it and see if you want to put your deposit down and start paying on it. And by May of next year, uh, you have your trip paid off and you can go with us. And I'm going to try to preach on nearly, nearly every site. I do that when I go to Israel. And I don't know about in Greece because I'm going to be so wrapped up yeah. into this. I want to suck up everything I can get. But uh, you're welcome to go. And so I'm going to bring some flyers and I'll have them up here in the front. Uh, and also, I have some papers left over from yesterday, the Echo and the Communique. And if you'd like to read about some things going on in our brotherhood or at the school, uh, I'll have that available as well uh, at the end of service. But here's the text. Uh, Paul is adamant about this. He's emphatic. And what I like about it is that he includes himself. It's not just exhortation. I mean, you know, secondarily, it's exhortation for us, but Paul is giving us a testimony. He's saying, we have this treasure in earthen vessels. We have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. And he's not just talking about Jehovah, but he's also talking about Jesus. He's also talking about the Holy Spirit because the three of them make up God. Right. We don't believe in three gods. We believe in one God and three manifestations of God. And the Holy Ghost and Christ are just as much God as the Father is. And that's important nowadays because there are people in the religious world who will tell you that Jesus was not, is not, and will never be God. But we who are believers, who believe in the Bible, we believe that Jesus is God. Am I right about it? And, 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 and I love, I love how, how, how the synoptics talk about the life and teachings of Christ. But my favorite book in the Bible is John. John. John's like me. John cuts straight across the field. He says, listen, I know that Jesus is God. And that's important, church, because when you put your faith in Christ, you're putting it in God. John says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was with God in the beginning. John said, verse 14, and the Word became flesh and dwelt among us as the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth, and we beheld his glory. John said in verse 17, the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. John says, I know for a fact that Jesus is God. And so when we put our faith in this book called the Bible, we're literally putting it in God, Christ, and the Holy Spirit. The Bible is the written word of God. And Jesus is the living word of God. And everything in this book from Genesis all the way to Revelation is connected to Jesus in one way or another. Y'all going to help me this morning? I'm telling you we are blessed people when we put our faith in Christ because Christ is God. John said, if that's not enough, listen, I, I know I'm inspired by the Holy Ghost to write this down, but John says, I have eyewitness evidence that Jesus is God. How do you know, John? Because I saw Jesus do God stuff. He did God stuff. We were at the wedding of Cana. They ran out of wine. They brought him jugs full of water. But John said, I saw Jesus change water into wine. John has said if that ain't enough. One night we were on a boat late. We left him on the shore. We were out in the middle of the Sea of Galilee. It got late at night. We looked up. Here he comes walking on water. John said, I saw him do God stuff. God stuff. John said, we were walking in a crowd one day and people were pushing and shoving. Folk were everywhere. And all of a sudden the Lord stopped and said, hey, wait a minute. Somebody touched me. And we said, Lord, there's so many folk. He said, no, 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 no. I felt right to leave my body. And when he turned around, he looked in the eye a woman who was bleeding to death but now she was healed because she touched the hem of his coat. John said, I saw Jesus do God's stuff. All right, all right. John said, 
that I saw him take two fish, five biscuits, and open a buffet on the mountains. John said, I saw him give back sight to the blind, make the lame to walk, the deaf to hear, the dumb to die. John said, I saw him raise Lazarus from the dead. I saw him raise Jack with star. John said, we were in a room one day after they crucified him on the cross. We were locked inside. All of a sudden, here he come walking through the door. John said he did dark stuff. He showed us his hands. He showed us the hole in his side. We knew this was the resurrected Lord. John said, if that ain't enough, I got some more evidence. We were standing outside the hills of Jerusalem. This was after the resurrection, after he commissioned us. We watched him board clouds and go back up into the heaven. John said, I saw him do God stuff. God stuff. God stuff. And the beauty of that is when we put our faith in Christ, we're putting it in God himself. Is that all right? Now, whether y'all say amen or not, I'm going to preach here in a few minutes because I'm getting ready to go home. Now, y'all can look at me all you want to, but whether you say amen or not, I'm going to preach. Once my motor gets going, I'm going to preach this morning. Now, if you, you came to get something, I want you to leave here with your cup running over. Don't, 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 don't. If you don't leave here smiling this morning, it's not God's fault. It's not the Holy Ghost's fault. It's not Christ's fault. It's your fault. The Holy Spirit will bring joy in your life. The Holy Ghost will make you happy when you go to church. And when you leave the house of prayer, you ought to have some joy in your heart. Amen. So you might be having a hard time smiling right now. But if you follow the Holy Spirit, when you leave the house of the Lord, you ought to be smiling and ought to have some joy in your heart, even if you got trouble back at the house. Somebody up in here has got some problems, some issues, some drama, some situations, but God is able to help you with it. I love the way Paul put it. He said, listen, we're troubled. On every side. Paul said, I know what trouble is. I'm not talking about something somebody told me. Paul said, I had trouble in my life. But you know what's so wonderful about him? At the end of his life, he could say what our brother said in his prayer this morning. He said, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. I had trouble, but I kept the faith. They beat me with rods, but I kept the faith. They scourged my back, but I kept the faith. They ran me out of town, but I kept the faith. I was in the, I was in the wilderness. I was in perils in the sea. I was in perils of false power. But Paul said, through it all, I kept the faith. How, how, how was Paul able to keep the faith? Because he knew God. And more than that, he knew God knew him. Can you say that about God this morning? Can you say God knows me? Can God say I know you? Because see the beauty is when God knows you, there's nothing that can come up on you that he cannot handle. Have you ever wonder what that old stands for? In the middle of God's name? This is a good shouting point here. Don't miss your chance to shout this morning now. That old stands for omniscient. Omnipotent, omnipresent, omni-audio, omni-video. Y'all miss it, y'all miss it, y'all miss it. You may not even do it now, but when you get back home today, you'll shout when you think about the God we serve. He has all power in his hands. The God we serve is in every place. The God we serve, he knows everything. He is everything. He sees everything. Nothing can get by him. That's why I love him so much. He, he can go before me and prepare the way so that when I get to a bad thing down the road, he's already worked that thing out. The God we serve has us under what I call providential care. The word providential comes from two words, pro meaning before it, but there meaning to see. God can see beforehand what's going to happen in my life. God does not circumscribe the time. He circumvents time. We're stuck in today, but God is already in tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, you're not feeling me on this. What's today's date? Today's date is what? 12th of what? October. We're stuck, Brother Fred, in October 12th. We can't get into October 13 until one second after midnight. 
But the God we serve is not only in 12 helping us with our situation today, but he's already over in 13. Oh, I wish I had some help up in here this morning. He's in 13 because you, when you get to work tomorrow, that's going to be an issue you didn't know anything about. But your God is already that out, working that thing out. And that's why when you get to that thing, you can say, no problem, man. He's in 13. He's in 14. Matter of fact, he's already in 2015. 16 and 17. And that's why he can say, Jack, come on. It's going to be all right. The just shall live five by faith. Come on. Just trust me. I got this. I got this. No problem. It's too big. I can't handle it. And so when I get from the right now over to the not yet, my problems are no longer. Are y'all following me? Paul, Paul easily could say, we're trying on every side, yet not distressed, perplexed, but not in despair, persecuted, but not forsaken, cast down, but not destroyed. No problem. No problem. What, 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 what you got going on in your life? You think the Lord can't help you All with right, it. Come on now. Huh? Come on. Have you got a broken heart? All right. Have you lost somebody that you uh, love? Uh, what, what, what's going on in your life? Is there, is there some economic disparity in your life? Yeah. Let me break it down for you. Are you broke? Oh, oh y'all know somebody being broke. Oh, yeah. well, what, what's going on in your life? Have you gotten bad news? the doctor, you got cancer, you got leukemia, you got EMS, you got sickle spell, you got something that doctors don't know how to handle. What's going on in you? Have you made some bad decisions, some bad choices, taken a bad advice or recommendation? What's going on in your life that you think God cannot help you with? I stopped by to tell you this morning, there is nothing too big, too bad that God cannot handle in your life. Why? Because God wants to get glory from you. He wants glory. And so that's why he, he provides. He makes a way. I, I tell you what, let me do. Let me do this. Let me do this. Okay. Let me do this. Let me go back into the Old Testament and give you some, 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 some examples okay. of people who trusted in God and came to the conclusion that with God on their side, no problem. Right. You remember in uh, 2 Kings 20, okay. God has a servant named Hezekiah. All right. Hezekiah is sick unto death. He's about to die. And he realizes that death is imminent. And so the Bible says he begins to cry. And while he's crying, he's praying. He's praying and crying. He's crying and praying. And God hears his prayer. God acknowledges his tears. And let me drop this while I pass through. I preached at a church for 23 years, Lake Como Church of Christ. I did hundreds and hundreds of services and eulogies and funerals, and I counseled families, and I told them, it's all right to cry when you lose somebody you love. Right. God has a tear bottle. All right. You read over in Psalms. He has a tear bottle. David says, record thou my tears in your bottle. He knows why you're crying. He, he would never give you tear ducts if he didn't want you to cry. It's all right to cry, but when you get through crying, keep trusting in God. Keep trusting in God, because tears are going to come. That's just a sign of emotion inside of you. But God is able to help you with your situation. Doesn't matter what it is. And so Hezekiah is crying. He's praying. He's crying. He's praying. So God, what does God do? He extends his life 15 years. Somebody in here right now, if you, if you, if you, if you had the wherewithal, you shout right now because you know a doctor told you five years ago you got cancer, you don't have long to live, maybe six months, and here you are still here in the house of the Lord on this morning. You know God is able to extend life. How many of us have been sick in here and sick even under death and the tracks came together, prayed for you, and now you sit up in here this morning. We serve a God who's able to do more than man can think. That's why Paul said in Ephesians chapter 3 and verse number 20, under him who is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that you ask and think. I love him this morning. There are times I get myself in trouble and I want to get out of that. And I said, Lord, I done made a mistake here. Lord, can you help a brother out here? Lord, everybody's done turned their back. Lord, I need you. And he comes in. He does for me what you won't do for me. And I know at the end, nobody did it but God. Isn't that all right? That's why I look at life today and I say, no problem. I don't care what you come up with. No problem. 
situation and I'm trusting in him. Okay, y'all don't like Hezekiah. Do you remember 1 Kings 19? God has another servant. His name is Elijah. Elijah is a lot like us. God got something for you to do. You fearful. Get weak. Take all running. So Elijah is running from Jezebel. And a henpecked husband, King Ahab. The Lord comes upon him in the desert. Elijah, what's going on? Elijah says, Lord, just take my life. Just take my life. I ain't no good to nobody. Just, Lord, just take my life. I, I'm all about my, Lord, just take my life. I, and, 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 I'm about to be consumed. It's all over. Just take, Lord. Said, no, I'm not going to take your life. So Elijah keeps on running in the desert. And the Bible says he goes into a cave. Y'all remember this? And he went into the cave and he thinks he's hiding. And the Lord comes and he, his voice says to him, Elijah, what, what, what's the problem here? What's, what's going on? And Elijah begins to explain, Lord, listen, I've been jealous for you. Been your man. But your people have forsaken your covenant. They dig down the altars. They kill the prophets. And I only I remain. They're trying to kill me. God said, Elijah, come on out of that cave. Go stand up on the mountain. Y'all remember this? First Kings 19. Read it at your leisure. So Elijah goes out and he stands up on the mountain. The Bible says, and the Lord passed by. After the Lord passed by, then, watch what happens. There's a mighty rushing wind. A hurricane, a tornado comes through. Elijah experiences this. But the Lord wasn't in the hurricane. Then there was an earthquake and rocks were falling everywhere and the ground was just falling under his feet. But the Lord was not in yes, the earthquake. Come on now. Then there was a raging fire, but the Lord wasn't in the fire. Yes, then there was a still, small voice. He said, now Elijah, what, 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 what did you say your problem was? Don't miss your chance to shout on this thing. And Elijah didn't like most of us. God showed himself. Yes, sir. Showed his power, his majesty. Yes, sir. And Elijah said, they've forsaken your covenant. They've digged down their altars. they killed the prophets. Mm -hmm. I only I remain in trying to kill me. God said, listen, Elijah, I got 7,000 yes, in Israel that have not bowed the knee to Baal. He said, now get back on the job. Yes, no problem. We got this. I let you see the hurricane, the fire, the, the earthquake, and you think anything that, that I can't handle? Okay. 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 Well, that didn't move some of y'all. <laughs> oh, I know what will. I know what will. You remember? God had three Hebrew boys. I know y'all know them. Shadrach and Meshach. Not a bad Negro. No, no, no. A bad Negro. A bad Negro. A bad Negro. These three would not bow down to Nebuchadnezzar's golden image. You remember Nebuchadnezzar. You read this. It's in the book of Daniel. He built a, a golden image, nine stories tall. And he said, now, whenever you hear the music playing, I want you to bow down and worship my golden image. And I, I preach a sermon from this sometime. The music is playing because, church, the music is playing right now. We're dealing with same-sex marriage, yes, same-sex attraction. Yes, That's the music playing right now. Yes, Y'all feeling me? I'm not going to camp out on it right now, but I want you to know the music is playing, and the, and the devil is trying to get us to bow down and worship him. Yes, anyway, Nebuchadnezzar said, when you hear this, this golden image, when you hear the music, I want you to bow down and worship this golden image. These three young men would not bow down. Right, right. The king brought them in. He's angry. He says, now, is it true you will not bow down to my golden image? And listen to him talk. They said, oh, king, we're not careful yes, in answering you in this matter. Yes, they said, we will not bow down to your golden image. Our God is able right. to deliver us. And even if he doesn't deliver us, we will not bow down. The king got angry. He said, bind them up. They had on all their clothes, everything. They had, he said, bind them up. Not just tie the hand behind their back. They were bound up. He said, make that fire seven times hot. Throw them in there. Burn them up. So they bound them up. Made the fire hot. Threw them in. The men that threw them in there, the fire jumped out and killed them. That's right. 
Y'all still with me? Mm -hmm. Don't miss your chance to shout. And, and the Bible says a day passed and the next day the king went and looked in the pit. Listen to him, dog. Didn't we throw three in that fire? But I see four. And one of them looks like the Son of God. Now, I don't know how he knew what the Son of God looked like, but he said, one of them looked like the Son of God. Now, church, don't play with me. It's more. Who threw the Lord in the fire? <laughs> All right, now. This, this is your shouting point right here. You know why you can't tell me? He was already in the fire. That's, that's what ought to make you happy when fiery trials come in your life. No problem, man. God is already in the fire. When folks turn their back on you, God is already there. When your heart is broken, God is already there. When your mama dies, God is already there. When your loved one dies, God is there. When you lose your job, God is there. When you got an incurable disease, God is already there. And you know what I discovered about God? When the world puts something on you, the Lord will take it off. They were bound up, thrown in. Nebuchadnezzar said they're in there walking around loose. God had taken off the back. Say when they came out, they didn't even smell like smoke. Y'all still here? Okay, okay. Let me find you another one real quick. I know you look like this. Y'all remember Jonah, don't you? Yeah. See, if you didn't say amen, it's going to be tough now. God said, Jonah, go down to Nineveh. Tell Nineveh to repent. Go preach. Go represent me. Go, go tell them. I see it. Jonah was fearful, yeah. weak, afraid. Right. Instead of going to Nineveh, Jonah took off in the other direction going to Joppa. Yes, sir. Matter of fact, to get to Joppa, he went and got him a ticket. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, sir. And he got on a little boat. Yes, sir. And this ship is headed toward Tarshish. Yes, now y'all know I'm an interactive preacher, so I'm going, I'm going to paint a picture for you this morning. Right. Jonah goes on the ship Goes down in the back part, in the hinder part, curls up and goes to sleep. Jonah doesn't realize while he's sleeping, God is looking right at him. I said, God is looking right at him. He's looking right at him, but he didn't bother. He's looking right at Jonah, but he didn't bother. But God did do this. He told a thunder. Go ahead and beat your drum. Told a lightning, go ahead, strike a fire all the way across the sea. Looking right at it, didn't bother John. Told the wind, blow real hard. Told the wind, stand up real hard. God ordered a storm to show up. And when the storm showed up, it showed up. It got so bad, the captain called all his men together. He said, fellas, we ain't never had a situation like this before. We've been on the sea up and down, but we've never had it this bad. It looks like we're going to die. And all I can tell y'all right now, call on your God to help us. we got to have divine help out here. And they ain't got to call on any God. Somebody said, well, wait, there's another man, but he ain't up here. Captain said, where is it? He said, he's in the hiding part of the ship. The captain went down, found Jonah asleep. Woke him up. Ask him, how can you sleep? Storm raging like this. Thunder and lightning and rain and wind and water all in the ship. We about to say, I told them guys up top, y'all better call on your God. I'm telling you the same thing. Jonah, who is your God? Jonah said, my God is the father of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He said, you better call on him. Jonah said, I ain't got to call. Right. He already knows I'm trying to run and I'm trying to hide. He knows where I am. Jonah said, if you want peace on your ship, you better throw me overboard. They didn't want to do it. But in the meantime, and I'm not exegeting the text here. In the meantime, the Bible says God prepared a fish. Yes. So, Brother Hughes, what happened is God talked to a fish. He said, hey, listen, I want you to swim around up under this boat. In a few moments, I got a servant coming overboard. When you see him in the water, don't you nibble on him? Don't chew on him? Don't you bite him? I just want you to swallow him up whole and let him slide down in your bed. When you got him firmly in your inside, I want you to go down to the bottom of the sea and I want you to sit right there and wait till you hear from him. They threw Jonah overboard. Jonah thought this was the end. He's man, this is a problem here. This is it, this is it, this is it. He went overboard the fish saw him, swallowed him up. Didn't bite him, didn't chew on him, didn't nibble on him, just swallowed him up. He slid down into the belly of Jonah of this great big fish and the fish went all the way to the bottom of the sea. And he sat there 
waiting to hear from God. Right. One day passed. Yes. Two days passed. Yes. Jonah's got his mind right. The third day comes. He's repented of his sin. Yes. God spoke to the fish. He said, all right. Yes. He's got his mind right. right. Go spit him up. Hit him. Don't miss your chance to shout at church. This, this is a shouting point here because you know what I discovered about this text? We always look at Jonah being spit up on dry land. That, that ain't the blessing. The blessing is when Jonah was in the belly of the fish at the bottom of the sea, that told me it don't matter how bad life gets, how far you get away from God, how long you've been on drugs, how long you've been drinking alcohol, doesn't matter what you've done, if you turn back to God's holy hill, God
Y'all go shop together. You go to movies together. You go to recreate. Your families take vacations together. Why can't you share the gospel with them? Amen. Are you following me? These are some issues, some problems that are arising, and they, they, they haven't just shown up. It's been around for a while. I've got a real problem right now, and, and, and I don't know how to look at it because uh, I don't know all the facts, but this thing that they're doing with Adrian Peterson, the man took a switch and whipped his, his son. I said, hey, if he's going to jail, my mama need to go to jail. My grandmama need to go to jail. Y'all need to come get both of them. Because mama didn't just get a switch. She got three of them and braided them out. I played a basketball game in the fourth grade with webs all over my legs. And, and it didn't kill me. I'm not in jail. I'm not a drug addict. I'm not an alcoholic. I'm not chasing women. It didn't hurt me. Now, I don't know, I don't know how, how far he went with this. They say, you got to look at the pictures, look at the pictures. I had whelps. So Y'all get mighty quiet. And you'll be the same ones that say, these kids today, they ain't so bad. You know, parents ain't doing nothing with them. We'll leave them alone. Let the parents discipline them at home. got to find where the line is. And see, the government is going too far. Too far. So many different things. Yeah. They won't even let them say the Pledge of Allegiance in school. I pledge allegiance to the flag, United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. What's wrong with that? We did it growing up. On our money, it says, in God we trust. Am I right about it? We sing the song, God bless America. Won't even allow our children to pray in school, but then the first thing they do when they get into prison is give them a Bible. Are you, are y'all paying attention to this? Church, we've got to wake up and address the issues. And if we are people who believe in Jesus, we've got to stand boldly on the word of God. I'm going to quit right here. I'm going to quit right here. Because I'm going to start a whole other thing. But listen, somebody in here right now, you need to know that with God on your side, it's no problem. But you've got to trust Him. Put your faith in. Faith is not faith until it's put to the test. If you can see your way, that's not faith. You've got to be able to say, I trust in God, Christ, and the Holy Spirit in his word, and I'm going to live my life accordingly, regardless of what the world says. And I guarantee your life will be better because there are things that will come up in life that the world can't help you with. They'll turn on you, but God will never turn on you. Isn't that a blessing? So this morning, as I draw near to my conclusion for the third time, and I'm just sharing a thought with you this morning. I've been here before, and I, you know, for years, Brother Hughes, being in the shadow of my daddy, I used to just, I preached for reputation, because he, he's such a great preacher, and so when I showed up, they thought I ought to be just like him, and so I tried to uphold his name, but I stopped doing it. I don't preach for reputation, I preach for information, and I'm trying to help somebody. And I've been here before, I don't have to impress you all this morning, I'm here to tell you that God is waiting to help you with that problem. He helps you and you realize that you owe him, then you become a greater asset to the church. Sometimes I don't feel like preaching, but I never say no because I feel obligated to God. Why am I obligated? Because he's been too good to me. You, you're looking at me, you may think, and I hope you don't do this, but you say, well, he, he looked like he got it all together. No, I don't have it all together. I'm work in progress. I'm that, I'm, I'm that pottery on the wheel. If you look back at the text, he said in verse 7, we have this treasure in the earthen vessel. The earthen vessel is a jar of clay. That's all we are. That's all we are. It's nothing but jars of clay. We are pottery. And I don't mind it as long as God has his hands on me. I'm the, I, I'm the pottery. He's the potter. I'm the clay. He's got his hands on me working things out for his good. He's taking out stuff he doesn't like and he's putting in stuff he does like. So I say, Lord, don't ever take your hands off. As 
long as he's got his hand. And sometimes it hurts when he disciplines me, but I know he loves me. Amen. Bible says he chastens them that he loves them, all right? And so you ought to pray, God, don't ever take your hands off me. Use me to your glory and to your And he'll guarantee that there'll be nothing that can come up in life that can take you out. Even if you die, you're still in the hands of God. Isn't that wonderful? That's an awesome thing. All right, God bless you this morning. You've been good for 45 minutes. I'm going to quit. No, I'm going to quit. I'm going to quit. But then y'all know I'll be back in Nashville at some point or another. Lord said the same. If you're here this morning, you've got some problems, some drama in your life. And we all do. We all do. Don't, don't ever think you're the Lone Ranger. Everybody has drama, issues, situations. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Some of you are dwelling on it right now. Sometimes you can't even worship God because there's something so serious going on in your life. And that's why I tell people when they come to church, I say, if you got problems, you brought them, you don't want, to, you don't want the Lord to handle it, just leave them on the steps. Come on in, worship the Lord, and then go on back out. Your problems will still be there. Ain't nobody going to steal your problem. <laughs> they might get your car, but they ain't going to get your problem. They'll leave them right there. But he's, he's here to help you with your situation. So if you're here this morning and you're guilty of distance from God or just need the prayers of the righteous, he's ready, willing, and able right now, right now, to give you what you need. If you're not a member of the body of Christ, I didn't look, but I'm more than sure there's water in that pool. I said there's water in that pool. Amen. I just believe that if you come down the aisles believing in Jesus, repent of your sins and confess Christ to be the Son of God, the Lord of your life, I just believe that this morning we will baptize you in water and the Lord will add you to his body. Amen. The church of Christ. And you can leave here claiming salvation and talking just like a Jamaican. <laughs> no problem, Father. No problem. Stand on your feet right now. God bless you. God bless you. If you want to go to heaven, you better get ready now. And let me tell you, if you want to go to heaven, say you better get ready now. And let me tell you, if you want to go to Doctrinal preacher, but 
but I, you don't need to hear all about the oneness of the church and the essentiality of baptism. You just need to know God is able to help you where you are. So right now, we're going to sing one more verse of this song. And if you're here and subject to the Savior's invitation, if you need prayers of the righteous, whatever your need is, now is the time. Not tomorrow, not next week. Now is the time. And God is waiting. And just like Jonah, God looking right at you. He's looking right at you. And it's, it's, it's going to stall him sometime. Just trying to get your attention. It's going to stall him. You're going to lose somebody you love. You're going to have a broken heart. You're going to have some issues and drama situations so he can get your attention and let you know you can't make it by yourself. Amen. So right now he's trying. Will you let him in? One more verse, Brother Fred. Will you let him in? You got to hear a word. Too late when the trumpet sounded. 